I'll talk with him this evening, but I'm sure we'll do what we can to help. Thank you. Goodbye. Sorry to buzz you when you were busy, but the gentleman on the phone said it was urgent. That's all right, Gwen. I'm free now. Did you get a name? Greengrass. Claude Greengrass. PC Bradley? Yes. Detective Chief Superintendent Tatton Leeds CID. Um, come in, sir. Ah, pleasant little place. Uh, yes, sir. Quiet, I imagine. Oh, uh, so so, sir. I, I report to the uh, sergeant at Ashley. Should I let them know you here? Uh, no. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, sir, but um, should I know why you're here? Top brass don't normally drop in like this. No, I expect not. You heard of a Jim Duggan? Well, first division criminal. What do you know about him? Only what I've read in the papers. Uh, isn't he about to go to trial? Starts tomorrow in Leeds. Only way we've been able to nail him is by doing a deal with one of his men, Barry Ross. What sort of deal? All oh, information in return for money, legal immunity, new identity, that sort of thing. We've hidden Ross for six months, but uh, Duggan's men are making one last effort to find him. So, uh, so that's why you're here? I want you to hide him till he takes a stand in three days' time. Hide him? Uh, here, sir. Police house, isn't it? Well, has this been cleared by my superiors? Chief Constable's superior enough for you. <laughs> um, of course, sir. <laughs> oh, I'm pleased to hear it. Duggan's the biggest crime boss outside London. He's got the money to buy anyone, and I mean anyone. So no one else must know about this, Constable. Not your sergeant, your mates at the station. Um, just one complication, sir. My wife. Don't worry about that, lad. I've already spoken to her. Is the proprietor in? No, Mr. Scrapp's had to go out urgently. I'm just filling in. But can I help you at all? Certainly, love. You can put the kettle on. Hello, Mrs. Bradley. Hello, David. I'm not interrupting anything, am I? No, Claude asked me to wait for you here. Oh, where is he? Come and sit down, David. Well, nothing bad happened, does it? No, 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 something good. He got word from his sister in the West Indies that she's won a lot of money in the government sweepstake. As her closest relative, she's promised to share it with him. Flipping heck! Is he down the pub celebrating? Uh, no, he's on his way to the airport to catch a flight. What's the West Indies? You never said. Oh, the news on the ticket only arrived this morning. It had been lost in the post. Nice holiday. It's more than that, David. He's gone for the foreseeable future. How long's that for? Uh, possibly a long time. Oh, I see. And that's why he wants to make provision for you and Alfred. Mm. Is it sunny in the West Indies? Yes. Hope he's taken his hat. Any problems? No. 
Thanks for filling in at such short notice. Oh, there's no trouble. Did you get called off OK? I just made it. Oh, lucky sense, anyway. Can you imagine it? White beaches and blue skies. Oh, sounds lovely, doesn't it? Mm. Oh, there's a gentleman in the back waiting to see you. What gentleman? Tell him it's Vernon, he said. Vernon? Do that. What are you doing here? Oh, that's nice. Your nearest kith and kin pays a visit and that's your welcome. Well, it's such a pleasant surprise. Long time. Not as long for you, Bernie, as for me. Because from the look of it, time here has stood flaming still. Hi. Hi. Good day. Ah, oh, strange day. Yeah. Look, I'm sorry I wasn't able to warn you about Tatton before he dropped on you. As soon as he left my office, I got an urgent call to go to Claude Greengrass's. Have you heard about him? Oh, yes. The, uh, the Bush Telegraph's been busy all day. <laughs> Look, as for Tatton, I'm not at all sure we should go along with it. it sounded more like an order than a request, mate. Right? Well, for me, possibly, but, uh, but not for you. Look, we know nothing about Ross or the men looking for him. Well, Tatton says we'll be helping to put a major criminal behind bars. It's only for two nights. It'll be fine, honestly. Hi, Benny. Hello again. What can I get you? Usual for me, and a scotch. Will that be a single or a double? Make it a double, love, to mark the occasion. Oh, uh, what occasion's that, then? The first time me and our kid have seen each other for 15 years. Vernon's my brother. <gasps> really? You don't look much like brothers. Stepbrother. <laughs> my mother was a small, delicate boned woman. And his wasn't. So what brings you back here then, Vernon? Well, I've been and made a bit of brass, you know, and I thought I might invest a bit of it back here. Oh, in what sort of thing? Well, there's a hotel in Whitby that's caught my eye. Oh, so you think it'd head over there then, are you? Aye. I thought it'd be rude to pass. You're back. Yes, sir. Barry, PC Bradley. All right. You'll be safe here. Oh, yeah. That's what you said before I cop this. There's a spare helmet on the bike. Keep him indoors. Don't try to contact me unless it's absolutely necessary. And remember, trust nobody. Right, sir. I'll see you back here at 9 a.m. two days' time. Yes, sir. He's not answering, sir. Likely he's on his way. Uh, can we uh, give him any ideas to what you want to speak to him about? Why not, since the same applies to you two? Oh. Overdue and sloppily presented paperwork. Ah. Whose sandwich is that? What's the filling? It's a cheese and chutney. Not guilty. It seems like only five minutes since I last sluiced out in here. A few months under Sergeant Craddock and you're back to your old ways. I want all outstanding reports and files brought up to date. And while I'm in charge, no more eating in the duty room. Right, Sergeant. Anyone else work here? No. Nope. Coolers? Depends. Keep out of sight and it shouldn't be a problem. Assuming your missus can keep her trap shut. 
She can. She's one in a million, then. The injury. I can do it. It's one of his men. Tell me, why are you running the risk? I've done one stretch inside. I'm not doing another. So what you go down for? Parking on a zebra crossing. Where's this dog back? Garden. I expected you in my office this morning. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you busy with this gentleman? Uh, no, Sarge. He's, uh, he's just a friend of mine. Um, he's stopping over on his way up to Newcastle. Oh. Uh, John. Hello. All right. I'll, uh, I'll go and find my bunk then. Right, yeah, just up the stairs, second on the left, John. Welcoming visitors, more important than doing your job. No, I was actually catching up on some paperwork. Really? I was going to ask you about that. Have you got a statement from the man who witnessed the RTA outside the Aidensfield Arms? Uh, not yet, Sarge. It's well over a month since the accident. Well, I've tried, but he lives in Whitby and he's only available in the evening, so... Then go and see him in the evening. Right, Sarge. I want it on my desk first thing tomorrow morning. Without fail. First thing. Bradley, look, I need a favour, just between you and me. The criminal record of a Barry Ross. Yep, yeah, Ross, yeah. Oh, and uh, don't let anyone know I've asked, OK? Thanks. Finally got up, have you? I think better lying on me back. Shout out if you need any help under there. Well... So, were you thinking of how to get from here to Whitby? No. I was thinking of how to get this set up from here to the 20th century. Don't waste your time. I mean, look at you. Mechanic, undertaker, petrol pump pumper. And very good you are. But anyone can see you're not a businessman. And how is that? Well, for a start, you've got your hands dirty. Vernon, I'm happy the way things are, thanks. Well, I'm not. You haven't forgotten I'm a shareholder in this lean-to you call a garage. Five percent to my ninety-five. A stakeholder nonetheless, like Dad wanted. Entitled to a share of the profits. Profits? I never make a profit. Well, brother of mine, your luck is about to change. <laughs> You see Mrs. Bradley, David? Yeah, she was uh, waiting at Mr. Greengrass's for me. He always given me the house and the business to run as I like while he's away. So he told me. I've never lived by myself before, Mr. Scripps. You've got Alfred for company, and your mum's only up the road. <laughs> oh, David, this is Vernon. Vernon's my stepbrother. And David is. Well, I'm the owner of a truckload of turnips, by the look of it. <laughs> oh, 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 that's right, that's me. Turnips? Yeah. Well, I was concreting this farm track, and Mr Greengrass, he said, on no account, you come back without being paid. I mean, I've, that farmer hasn't got much money, and so in, in the end, I've ended up with turnips. What are you going to do with them? Oh, well, I was rather hoping you were going to tell me that. The Crown will prove, beyond reasonable doubt, that Michael James Duggan was on each occasion the architect of these crimes and their chief beneficiary. It will be shown that the accused has been able to effect these crimes while evading prosecution for a considerable time and that he is a highly dangerous and highly organised criminal.
Enfield Police. Someone's been under the regional records office about our man. Was it you? Yes, sir. I'm, I'm sorry. I was... I told you not to talk to anybody. Look, I, I did it out of concern for my wife. <laughs> Grow up, Bradley. You've only got him for two nights. He's safe, then? Well, of course he's safe. In his position, he's only a threat to himself. What did you say that for? What? That you can help him. You know nothing about turnips. In any case, you're leaving today. Ah. Change of plan. What? If you think I'm spending another night on that settee... Now, are you sure you're OK? I'll be fine. Look, if there's a problem of any sort... There won't be a problem. Enjoy me, then. No, thanks. Oh, come on. Well, the cat's away. I've had make a packet. Of course, uh, Doug and only got the best for us. It's the least he could do before you do time for him. <laughs> yeah, right. You want a top up? No, thanks. One's my limit. So, how come you got hitched to a copper, eh? Smart girl like you must be on twice his money. Money doesn't come into it. Yeah, well, he'll never get rich then, will he? Not unless he's on the take. Well, then he'll never get rich. I think that's where I went wrong. Not having a good woman to keep me in check. Well, it's never too late. No. Well, sometimes there's no turning back. No second chance. I thought this was your second chance. A new identity. A new life. It'll still be me, though, won't it? Well, people can change. Yeah, come on. Just a top up, eh? Look, oh. no. I've had enough. And I'd say you had too. I know I put you on the spot, but that's why I'm calling you at home. Alex, I need to know what Ross went down for. Yes, yes, it is that important. Well, what kind of violence? Well, did she survive? Yeah, yeah, I'm still here. Um, yeah, look. Thanks very much. That's what can happen. It's a funny feeling. Coppers show me respect. If the grass wants something, you make sure he gets it. Oh, some pleasant female company, Barry. Oh, yeah, yeah, certainly. A condemned man's last wish. I've got a busy day tomorrow. If you'll excuse me. I wasn't to be left alone. Look, I'm very tired. Sit down and have a nightcap. I'm going to bed. I wasn't to be left alone! It was a condition. Not for me, it wasn't. Mike will be home shortly. Oh. 
Surely. No, I don't think so. Make yourself some coffee and sober up. <laughs> what, what? <laughs> I'll be arrested, eh? Putting the clink. Vain, so do you. See, the thing is, they've got to keep me sweet. Sweet as you. You shouldn't have done that. Tripped on the stairs. Tripped? Too much whiskey. Oh, wonderful. Thanks for the sympathy. Is it going to be all right? No, we're going to have to get him proper medical attention. Well, how? He can't leave the house. Well, then we'll have to get a doctor here. Well, a doctor's bound to ask questions. I'll, um, I'll speak to Tatton. But Mike, this can't wait for Tatton. Anyone interested in what I think? No, they're not. There's a young woman doctor at Ashfordley Hospital. I've been dealing with her on a serious injury claim. I think she could be trusted. Dr. Somerby? Yes? Constable Bradley. I think you know my wife, Jackie Bradley, the solicitor? Oh, yeah, hello. Hi. Um, do you have a moment? I've just come off night shift and my bed's calling. So a moment's fine. Any longer, I'll be asleep. Oh. What is it? Well, I've got an injured man. He needs a doctor desperately, um, but in the strictest confidence. Where is he? I can take you to him. Why can't you bring him in? I can't do that. <laughs> Look, I know this all sounds very strange, but there is a good reason, believe me. Look, I really have had a very long night, and there are other excellent doctors here. Uh, doctor, please. We need you urgently. So this is your place, eh? For, uh, yeah, for the um, foreseeable future. I expect you'll want to tidy things up a bit. <laughs> well, I haven't thought, no. Fresh lick of paint. <laughs> I don't want Mr. Greengrass to come back and not know where he is. Most of this stuff, I think, could go on a bonfire. Hey, and then the antiques, these. Who says? Well, Mr. Greengrass. I don't know, those that aren't antiques, they soon will be, that's what he says. He's an expert, then, is he? Oh, yeah. Upstairs. No, I should have asked Hatton. Mike, you had no choice. So, what really happened on the stairs, eh? Look, he fell. He had too much to drink. I've already said. Well, I'm not going to leave you alone with them again. Good. You've no business doing deals with a man like that. You should be in prison with the rest of them. It's not your decision. I know, but it just doesn't feel right. How is he? Not very good. The wounds become infected, so I've had to give him an injection. Thank you. Perhaps you'll tell me now why he can't go to hospital. No, I can't. He sustained a gunshot wound. Yes, a couple of days ago. Why didn't you tell me? You might not have come. You're dead right, I wouldn't. Look, I understand you're angry, but we're depending on you to keep this visit a secret. Then give, Constable. I can't. Look, please, Doctor. Trust us for one more day, and then we'll be able to tell you everything. I'll need another injection and a change of dressing. I'll come early tomorrow. And on how many occasions did you see Mr. Duggan over this period? Oh, half a dozen times, I'd say. Six times? And did he use his own name? No. He called himself Phillips. What do you mean he fell? He was drunk. Well, I don't know. He must have had it with him. You're a walking disaster area, Bradley. How safe is this doctor? She'll stay quiet until the job's done. Well, you sound convinced. I wish I were. Are you going to 
tell me where we're going? Korea. Here. It's a pig farm. Correct. And what do pigs eat? Anything. Exactly. <laughs> You're pushing it. What's up? Trouble at home? What? No, no, no. Uh, everything's fine. It's none of my business. It doesn't look like it. You're right, Alf. It's uh, none of your business. Bradley! Better late than never. In my office, please. I asked for your witness statement first thing. I didn't get it. Why not? Bike trouble. I had to turn back. Shut the door. You're beginning to bother me, Bradley. Sarge? You're your own man out in Aidensfield, but it seems to me that you're abusing the privilege. Sarge, I didn't think it's sensible to run the risk of getting stranded. Especially as you might have had other plans. I, I'm sorry, I don't follow. Your friend's still staying with you? Yes. Well, you must have had plans before I put my oar in yesterday. Not particularly. I find that hard to believe. In fact, I'm finding you increasingly hard to believe. I'm sorry, Sarge, I... You failed to turn up for parade yesterday without explanation and again today. Sarge. Not even an excuse? Very well. I'm making this a formal disciplinary matter. Shut the door on your way out. This morning I was tired and confused, but now I've had a chance to think, I feel even more compromised. We took advantage of you. I'm very sorry. It's a rule of my profession that a gunshot wound has to be reported. Yes, I'm aware of that. My career could finish right here. Suppose your husband was responsible for that wound, or a friend of his. Well, you'd be accused of aiding and abetting. Exactly. Can you give me one good reason to trust you? No. I can only ask that you give Mike the 24 hours that he needs. Why me? Can you tell me that? I judged you were the sort of person I could depend on at a crisis. And your GP isn't? We haven't got one in Aidensfield. If it would help, you could swear an affidavit detailing the circumstances. That would carry some weight if you were ever called to account. What's up? I'm off. Why? What's happened? They were here. Who? There's two blokes at the front door, and I think one of them saw me. Jehovah's Witnesses. What? Jehovah's Witnesses. I saw them in the village. Look, I won't leave you again. No, too late. Let me talk to Tatton. Forget it. They're on to me. Who says they're on to you? Have you been using the phone? <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I've been using the phone. You just don't get it, do you, eh? They're torturing people to get to me. Nobody's gonna get to you, all right? Yeah, well, I'm not staying here on your say-so. Hey. Sarge, uh, I, I was just, um, 
Is there a problem? I think so. But I was hoping you might tell me what it is. The problem? With you, Bradley. <sighs> well, Sarge, there really isn't anything to say. Look, it's not too late to tear up my official complaint in return for a little openness. Your friend, gone now? Fr yes, Sarge. Forgive me, but he didn't seem your sort. <laughs> I, I know. I, I knew him way back when. Who else is in the house? No. Oh, there's someone upstairs. No. Why are you lying to me? Did you want pigs? Not really. What are you going to do with them? Don't know. What are you doing, Vernon? David needs cash, not livestock. Best deal possible, our kid. He's better off with two pigs than a truckload of turnips. I well, don't see how. Turnips don't need feeding. Turn them out when you get home, David. They'll forage for themselves. And then tomorrow we'll see about getting your cash. Tomorrow? You said you'd made yourself a stack of money. So I have. It's just going to take a day or two to sort of liberate it. Oh? Very hard getting currency over the Iron Curtain, you know. I wouldn't know. Yeah, well, I take it from one well versed in the ways of international trade. So, where exactly is your cash? Lithuania. Where is he? Upstairs. I've cuffed him to the bed. What? Well, if he isn't going to give evidence, I assumed he'd be facing charges. I'm Sergeant Noakes, sir. Yeah, I gather you play the key part in this fiasco. Just trying to do my job, sir. Is it usual to commandeer an officer without informing his superior? There's nothing usual about this, Sergeant. If I've been followed, Bradley, I'll have your backside for a plate rack. Bradley! Get those cuffs off him. Sir. You took your time, didn't you? Had to be careful. You've lost your bottle, Barry. Why is that, you mean? You wait for me downstairs, lad. What do you mean, wise dog? Well, for the first time in his life, Duggan's sweating, me. Me who can bang him up. We'll save him. Well, go down yourself. Oh, yeah. For five? Seven years? And then a big wedge of cash to come out, sir. You think? <laughs> yeah, I think. Ah, oh, you can save Doug and Barry, but you can't save yourself. I'll take your offer and squash you like a cockroach. I doubt you'd ever come out of jail. You'd say anything to get me into that witness box. You're a grass, Barry. You're finished here. So you pull yourself together and see sense. Right, his head straight again. Nine o'clock tomorrow. Right, sir. No more slip-ups. So did Sergeant Noakes apologise? Grudgingly. But still, you're off the hook. No, off for the time being. Come on. You deserve a commendation for this. Oh, thanks. But uh, I'd be just as happy to get him off the premises. It's been a long two days. Oh, well, never mind. It'll all be over by tomorrow. to take it to the wire. Better. More like. Where is he? Police house, Aidensfield. Any idea where he'll end up? As far as the money will take me. What will you do? Do. For a living. I'll make that. Shouldn't you be gone by now? No, I'm 
working here this morning. All right, see you later. Take care. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Time to go. Thanks again. You seem nervous. Who? The wounded man. Oh, it's his big day. I'll tell you later. It's a nice quiet spot you've got here. Haydensfield, yes, most of the time. I wouldn't mind having a look round. I'm not due in the office until later. I'll give you the guided tour if you like. No problems overnight, then? No, oh, no. No, Ike and Tina seem quite happy in the barn. Ike and Tina? Yeah. You see, that one, this one's Ike and that... Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, never mind, son. They'll both taste the same. I told you not to get too attached to them. Tried to save a boy he thought was trapped inside. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, the village hasn't had a doctor since. Is this place still to let? Well, yes, I think so. Why well, are you interested? Who knows? I hear GPs sometimes get to sleep at nights. Well, you'll be welcomed with open arms. The people have to see GPs out of the area. Well, what about those on the outlying farms? <laughs> they use the vet for everything except amputations. <laughs> Thanks for showing me around. It's my pleasure. Who knew? Look, as far as I know, only Tatton and me. Who sold me out? Shut up. Get in there. You're not going anywhere. What's up? Look, Bernie, I need your help. There are two men after us and there aren't. Um. Yeah, look, I need you to hide this man whilst I call for reinforcements. Oh, great. The cavalry. The Keystone Flaming Cops. Look, will you do that for me? Yes. Oh, thanks. Whoa. Ashford, I believe. She's here. It's Bradley. He's in a ladder. Bradley? We were ambushed. Bernie Scripps' garage. Two men in a maroon cortina and they're armed. Where are they likely to go looking for you? Well, I've no idea. Jackie. Bradley? Hello? Hello? Sorted. Were they interested? More than interested. I've done you a right good deal. How do you mean? You like sausages, don't you? Where is she? Jackie! Jackie! Where is she? Oh, help us look for Ross. She has no idea where he is and you know that. So why don't you tell me? Then we can be on our way. Can Doug and pay you enough to risk a charge of kidnap? She volunteered. Yeah, sure. Ask her. When you see her. And when's that gonna be? Depends on you, Constable. Fair exchange, surely. What's a piece of scum like Barry Ross to you compared to her? I won't have to think twice. You harm her and I'll kill you. Fine. So let's be sensible. Then we're both happy. I'm warning you. No, I'm warning you. He's at the garage. Which one? There is only one. I'll take you there. No, thanks. I'm sure your wife can show us the way. Or oh, just in case. Buy keys. Don't do anything stupid.
Well, what have you got to say? Nothing. Why not? Because Mr Greengrass has told me never to swear in front of the dog. Didn't he teach you out about business? <laughs> business? All we've done is we've, we've turned a, a heap of turnips into a load of sausages. You're missing the point, lad. It's the food chain. And what do you find at the end of the chain? A plug? You know, your Mr Greengrass has got an awful lot to answer for. Where's the boss? At this moment, that's me. Is that right? Can I help you? We're looking for a friend. We were told he was here. Sorry. Can't help you. You! Where is he? There's nobody here. Mind if I check? Yeah. Don't let's be silly. We just want to talk to him. Don't make trouble for yourself. Or, uh... inside. I need a car. Come on. You're right. I'll be fine. Come on, be a minute. It only does ten miles to the gallon. For heaven's sake! We're in the middle of nowhere. We're slowing. Sorry. No heroics, please. Still in the garage, come on. Close call. Tell me later. Count on it. That the evidence I shall give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Depends, love. On what? On whether we're celebrating or not. 
Did you get a chance to pop a sausage or two under your grill? Yep, I did. And was I right or was I right? Not bad. Not bad at all. You see? So how many do you want? Well, at the right price, I'll take the lot. The lot? Well, bangers and mashes the rambler's favourite. I can stick them in the chest freezer and use them as and when. What is a business brain like yours doing in such a pretty head? Working out the right price. <laughs> Do uh, great minds think alike? Mm. We're disappointing a bunch of customers so you can have the lot, you know. Aren't we? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Go on, then. What's this? Ten shillings. The rest is staying in the till. Why? Well, I was wondering how Claude was going to pay a slate off. Yep. What am I going to do now? Get it round in. How am I going to make ends meet? I've, I've got a, a house to upkeep. I've, I've got a dog to feed. Seems to me, David, what you need is a lodger. And where am I going to find a lodger? I think you might find there's one not a million miles away. When you're ready, love. Heartbeat, why do you miss when my 